So hey guys, it's another art topic video. Now, this video was inspired by a tweet thread that I saw a couple days ago. And I'm going to slap the original tweet on screen for you guys because you know me, I'm terrible at saying usernames. But I saw this and it was one of those like in-between moments where, you know, like you're waking up and then you're kind of like, uh, oh, no, no, starting your day. And I saw it and it, it really resonated with me because I was so happy someone was talking about it because this is something that my friends and I, we've openly bitched about this. We have openly complained about this shit for years. And it was always so bothersome because there never seemed to be a light out of it. And it sounds douchey to say, but it seemed like a lot of artists and the, these are <laughs> the ones I see this with the most are convention artists over like artists who just have online stores. Online store artists do the same thing too. So it's not like just convention artists, but this is where we saw a lot of it. And I've also gotten some flack for it in the past. And so seeing this Twitter thread, and just, I, I read, I read like so many people's stories where I'm sitting here like, fuck, I'm not alone. And you know, I know that sounds like really self-absorbed to be like, oh my God, you're thinking you're alone. Blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, again, you know, uh, with a lot of my videos, I like talking about things that interest me. And this is something that my friends and I would talk about. And it's that, you know, there's no nice way to say it. So it's like when artists are very, very rude, there are other people in the industry that do this too, but you mostly see it with artists. And it's, it's like, there's this weird, like, Schmeagol horde mentality of like, no, I don't want anybody else to know where I give my super special stuff. <laughs> and I know that's like probably really insulting to some people, but it's how I take it. Because there's some people who try to argue on both sides where they're like, oh, well, if everyone and their mom does this thing, it's not unique anymore, so no one's going to want it. Or, you know, the opposite. It's like, oh, well, if I'm the only one who has this one super special thing, everyone's going to flock to me. When I feel like your art should do the talking for you, same with your products. You know, um, people are going to probably debate in the comments, but whatever. You know, um, I've only done one convention. I'm doing more and I plan, I plan on doing, you know, more than what I'm currently doing in the future. But it costs a lot of money to invest into merch. And it's one of those things where if you're someone like me, where you're on a pretty tight budget, you can't really afford to have an endeavor flop. You know, it's kind of scary. It's scary looking into these things. And then you'll see people who are successful or people you even look up to where you ask them advice and they will ignore you. They'll tell you to Google it or they'll just be rude. And I've had cases where I remember the first time this was big was I was in high school still. And this was either my second or third year going to Anime Expo. And this isn't like, this isn't Anime Expo's fault. I need to say that. It's not the convention's fault. This was the artist. I don't even remember the artist at the time. But there was an artist where I believe enamel pins were like just getting big. Like, you know, people were just getting into doing enamel pins. And this was before, like, a lot of people, you know, openly talked about, like, Alibaba and AliExpress and stuff. Because a lot of people didn't... Those things, I believe they existed, but, like, people didn't fucking talk about them, you know? So people talk about them now, so it's more and more relevant, and people are being able to see it more common. But, great, my grammar's already all over the place, but this wouldn't be a Michelle video without it. So... I remember I asked them because I, at the time, I wanted to get into it. I wanted to do a convention. I remember for years, guys, years, I wanted to do conventions. And honestly, it's because of a lot of douchebag artists that I didn't do them so long. I kept, I kept feeling like my worth wasn't enough to where I'm like, oh, these people clearly see myself under them because of the way they're acting. So I, I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to try. And I asked the artist where they got their pins made. And instead of just giving me an answer and being rude, they acted as if they didn't hear my question. Like they full on didn't answer me, which to me 
still sticks in my mind to this day because that is one of the most insulting things I think you could do to somebody. And, well, Michelle, how do you know they weren't? There was no one else at their table. And I was with a group of friends. It was the most awkward, weirdest feeling because I was very clear. I asked where they got their pins made and how the process was. I was very polite. I wasn't a dick about it. And I was planning to buy from them. So it wasn't like I was going to, you know, be like, "Mm, I'm going to learn how to make my own enamel pins. And then I'm going to learn how to steal your art so I can make my own pins. Especially when, like, like, that's not how it fucking works because you have to give fucking resale. But anyway, uh, (laughs) um, they just full-on ignored my questions. There was, like, this really awkward couple of seconds of just silence. But, you know, there was car noise in the background. It was like, okay, it's kind of awkward. And so me and my group of buddies just kind of walked away because it got really fucking awkward and it was really rude. And I have had a shit ton of artists be like, oh, Google it. Or or be honest and be like, I don't want to tell you where I get mine done. And... Some people will try to argue like, well, yeah, if you have a super special niche thing, then you want to keep it super special and niche. So that way, you know, you have like a high on the market. But while I can, I can like somewhat understand that debate, just because I understand it doesn't mean I support it or I like it because I think it's bullshit. I think especially if the case, like, let's say someone didn't want to do conventions. Let's say they just wanted to make a nice print or make some nice art. A good example is um, people who would get, uh, like, gold gold foil versions of their prints where, like, you know, certain aspects of it were gold or silver or something. I remember seeing those and I remember thinking, like, I would love to do some of that with my own art at the time. So I wasn't even going to sell it. Asked people about it. Wouldn't fucking tell me. And then reading this thread, you would see people who would openly talk about like, well, if I give you my manufacturer, they're just going to be bogged down and the quality is going to go downhill. And I know I did that in a super snobby, like bitchy voice, but that's how it sounds like to me. Because to me, might be projecting here or assuming, but it sounds like, huh, you probably paid dirt nothing for these charms or charms, stickers, Enamel pins, and they're already pretty cheap, even when you get them from a good supplier. So it's like, okay, for me to hear that is, it's, it's, my mind goes to like, okay, it's probably dirt cheap. So people who are actually making the product, because fun fact, uh, unless you actually have like the machines, you have to outsource. Everybody outsources. Very few people can afford to get machines to do it from the fucking selves, because that's thousands of thousands of thousands of dollars worth of investment. Uh, so you're already paying dirt cheap. And so you're worried that these people are going to overwork themselves. So the market's going to be oversaturated when I think it's dumb because when I use places like zap creatives, which is really big and a lot of people use them, they were just able to, you know, turn their business into a fucking business to where, yeah, it got bigger, but now they offer more deals. They have better bundles. They still have a really nice turnaround rate. They're not sponsoring me. They're just what I use when I'm not doing a big wholesale order with my friends. And I think it's good to tell people, especially people trying out because like, Shouldn't we want to lift people up? Because I was, I was beaten down pretty much. I was super, didn't feel like my shit was worth it. And reading that thread, I would see people be like, oh yeah, people would only tell me where they got their stuff because I was a student, because I wasn't serious, because they didn't like the competition. And to me, you must not have a lot of confidence in your art to be an asshole, pretty much. Um, I've actually had artists reach out to me and be super pissed off that I, you know, I admit that getting prints made is like cents on the dollar. And some people are like, "Ah, you shouldn't tell them how much it actually costs. And I'm like, why? Why shouldn't I tell them that it costs that much? Because shouldn't they know? So they know to budget for that. So they know what to charge for it. So they know, you know, whether or not they should spend hours, days, weeks on a project to make a fuck ton of prints and then have the prints not sell. So yeah, even though now, you know, they didn't lose a lot of money, they lost a shit ton of time and they could have been working on other stuff. So please explain to me why why it's a, it's a bad idea. 
And, you know, when people ask me questions, I'll tell them where I get my stuff done. I get my prints on it cat print. I get, again, like I said, I get my charms. If I'm not doing a, a big wholesale order with my friends, I do it through Zap. You know, um, for stickers, I, I buy sticker paper. I use my parents' really nice printer, and I bought a sticker cutting machine. Was that so hard? Was, was, was that so hard? Like, I also feel like, you know, we need to tell people so they get into things because doing my first convention, I learned so much and very few people were helping me and giving me advice. The only real people giving me advice were um, my buddy Bree and Bree Pastel Monster and uh, Holly Brown because they had done conventions before. And I remember thinking in my stupid little brain, because y- y- you live and you learn, was I was like, oh, okay, if I get a fuck ton of charms, they'll sell. That's not the case. And now I have a lot of overstock that I don't need anymore. <laughs> you know, that I'm not going to be restocking because it was a good endeavor at the time. I'm not ashamed of making them. I don't regret making them. I regret buying as many as I did because I overshot. I'm not doing a big convention circuit. It's going to be a long time until I can afford to do a big convention circuit. You you know when you see artists who do like eight or nine conventions a year? Yeah, it's going to be like a long time for me to be able to do that. <laughs> but two or three? Yeah, I could probably do two or three cons a year. I'd like to do two or three, you know, uh, especially if they're like littler cons. But that's another thing too, like, you know, there's little cons out there. You don't have to just do the big boys. Again, growing up, I thought you only had like, no joke. I honest to God thought there was like only anime expo. I've heard people talk about ASEN and like Comic-Con. Those were like the three. And I know it sounds like super stupid. I didn't know any better. I didn't know there were mom and pop cons. I didn't know colleges put on cons. I didn't know you could do street vendor fairs. Like there's a, so much out there. I didn't know fucking existed. And I'm sitting here and people are sitting here where they're like sitting on this gold mine and people are not giving chances to it. You know, like when I tell people, hey, you know, don't spend thousands of dollars for one convention. You probably shouldn't. Uh, you know, a good example is I've had people tell me when I get my prints on at cap print, they were like, oh, well, just invest $800 in a really nice high, high res, you know, big format printer. And I'm like, can't afford that right now because I don't make a lot of money off of my prints. I make a lot of money off of my like charms, you know, stickers, little things, you know, button packs here and there. Um, my, not that my prints don't sell, they do sell, but I, I don't make enough profit to warrant buying a printer right now. Now, I should also say, if you have the money, Go ahead, go nuts, invest it. But I know most people who, most, not all, who do have the money, spend a shit ton of money investing in stock and then never use it, end up resenting it and end up being like, why did I waste my money on this? Very few are like, oh, well, at least now I have this nice printer, so, you know, I can do this and that. Or, or oh, I have this and this now, so I can, like, help my friends out. Because, like, I have my button press that I bought for really cheap and I'm, I'm planning on upsizing so I can have slightly bigger buttons. I've offered to my friends, like, hey, buy the supplies and I will literally make your, buy the supplies and the, like, cost to get your thing printed out, the, 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 the pad of paper, and I'll make, I'll make your buttons for you. Boom, there you go. You know, like, or you'll see places that offer those, again, because should I suggest that someone just starting out invest in a $300 button press? Now, to a professional, it's like, oh, $300, that's... That's not that much. But, you know, to someone starting out, $300 is a lot of fucking money. For, for a lot of people, $300 is a lot of fucking money. I remember when I bought my button machine, I had to save for so long just to get a $200 button machine. With, I think it was like $1,000 worth of parts. Not th- no, not $1,000. A, th- a thousand parts. Sorry. But, like, that was a big investment for me. And then, you know, did my first convention. And I still have a shit ton of buttons that didn't sell. But I was able to make back the price of my button machine. But that was also because I, you know, thought in advance, put money aside for it, and planned for it. 
Um, there's a lot of people who, uh, vexingly yours, I've talked about her before. She does really good convention prep and convention, like talking videos. I really like her videos because she's very honest about conventions she's done. And a couple of other friends of mine, you know, they've done conventions and they've given me advice and then talk to other artists and they'll just be like, Google it. I don't want the competition or don't answer. And it's, to me, it sounds like you don't have a lot of confidence in your own art. Because if you're that scared of some rando asking you advice politely, no, obviously if you're rude, you know, and they want to be rude back, that's fine. Or I had people be like, well, what if they get the question all the fucking time? Okay, then make a TOS, make an FAQ, make a video. I get people asking me commission questions all the time and instead of getting irritated at it, I just link them to my commission video, which I'm probably going to be redoing with Aerofax at some point. But it's, I'm like, okay, if there's any questions that you have that are on the video, please let me know because I was getting them all the time. There's a lot of ways you can make your life easier without being an asshole, in my opinion. And another really important thing is I've seen people, you know, um, who don't know basic tax info. Now, legally, I can't give tax advice and I live in the U.S. and the tax advice varies state to state, but... I know in California, you need a California seller's permit. You need to put money aside for California state tax and California sales tax. At least that's what my tax lady tells me. And so, you know, I've had to start charging tax on, and by the way, it is under what it is. I'm not actually like full on charging people the tax because that would be, last time I was, I did my taxes, they said it was like 25 to 30%. That's a big increase, you know? So Keep that in mind. When you're supporting an artist, depending on where they live, you know, 25 to 30% of that price isn't even going to the artist. That's going to taxes. So now you got to put, okay, 20, 30%. All right. So that's just, just going to taxes because you need to pay tax. You can get in a lot of trouble if you don't fucking pay your taxes. Um, then, you know, cost of getting the thing made. Okay. You got to put that in there. Then just an overall profit. And so there's a lot of work involved that not telling someone can screw them over. Uh, a friend of mine who's a commission artist, they, you know, they couldn't pay their taxes this year, which is really bad. And they didn't because they didn't put enough aside because they didn't know, they didn't ask, they didn't know how much they had to pay for tax. So they're like, oh, tax would be like, what, four or five percent? And it's like, no, it's a lot more than that. And so then they got screwed over and now they can't pay taxes and now they have to be put on a payment plan with the government. Not a fun time, guys. Not a fun time. And that stuff you should tell people who are starting out, you know? You should tell people who are starting out, like, yeah, just because you're getting paid in cash doesn't mean you can't not, you can't not, um, you know, submit you made that money. I know, I, I've heard of a lot of people who are like, oh, well, if I get paid in cash, I don't have to say that I got paid for that. And so I can write off and it's like, yeah, you know what that is? That's tax fraud. That's really bad if you get caught. Doing that or giving advice, that's really bad. You can get in a lot of trouble with it. Obviously, this is American tax advice. Like legal, like I said, legally can't really give advice, but from this is from what, I, from what I've learned. I'm not a tax expert. Talk to an ex tax expert. Don't turbo tax. Go to an H&R block. Or if you have a family member or a friend or a friend who knows a tax person, usually everybody in some form or nature knows a tax person, whether it be like a friend of a friend's parent or a friend of a friend's friend. And they can be a huge lifesaver. Same with keeping receipts on writing things off. You know, you see YouTubers all the time talking about how, oh, well, I tried to write off my house. And it's like, yeah, you can't write off your fucking house, dumbass. And I've seen people try to write off like every little nitpick and cranny for their stuff when it has nothing to do with anything. And then the tax people or the IRS are like, yeah, no, you can't write that off. See, that's pretty good information to let someone know when they're starting out. Or I've had people who they work part-time jobs and do commissions and stuff on the side. And then they'll be like, wait, I have to do taxes still? Because, like, I'm not getting a W-2. And it's like, exactly. But you're still making money. So you need to collect it. You need to tell them about it. Even more so if you're doing like a seller's permit or you need an EIN number and stuff. And I know for a lot of people it must be like, oh my god, I'm speaking jargon. But this is stuff that I didn't know. I didn't know. I always thought that, like, okay... <laughs> Pay for the booth if you get in, make the merch and sell it, and boom, profit. I didn't know about taxes. I didn't know about, you know, legalities. I didn't know about rules and regulations of conventions. A lot of conventions are really strict about rules and regulations, 
and people don't know about that. And then you end up with people who bought a table, got all set up, or showed up the day of, didn't have a seller's permit. Now they're out. Now they're out the merch they bought for that convention. Now they're out the price of the table because they won't give you refunds. And now you're just sitting there like, oh shit, well I hope I have an online store. My online store does well. And you know, if you don't have a big online store, now you're just sitting with with a giant hole in your pocket. And there's resentment there for that. And I don't, I don't like seeing people fail. And I don't like seeing people fucking sabotaging other people, which is why I wanted to make this video. You know, I'm very honest and I'm, I, I, I like to think, okay, uh, so-and-so thing takes about meh, dollar fifty cents to get made, maybe more, uh, obviously less if you buy wholesale and you then, you know, like, okay, you know, what would I charge this? What's the average for that? And then you do that. Now, obviously, uh, there are a lot of artists <laughs> where they are very popular and their art sells for a lot of money, even though it is, you know, cheaply made. I'm not saying it's a cheap, it's a cheap product. Like it could be a high quality product that is just happens to be cheaply, like it, the cost of getting it made is cheap. I shouldn't say cheaply made. Oh, ten, stumbling over my words, what's new? And so in doing so, I have seen artists sell charms that probably took them about um, one, two dollars to make. Maybe three if they're like a really big or really fancy. Selling them for 50 bucks. And they're selling. And some people are like, what a ripoff. And it's like, well, no one's making you buy it. Another thing that's important is supply and demand. Something else you have to learn. You know, um, if you have something at a cheap price, but you're... You're selling out like hotcakes to where you don't have time to invest into making new stuff because you're like, oh shit, these keep selling at this price. I have to keep reordering. I have to keep, you know, shipping them off. I get to like, you know, you end up, you know, becoming a cog in a machine and then you get extremely burnt out, extremely tired. And then people eventually are like, why aren't you making new stuff? And because it's a business. You're running a business that's yourself when you're trying to do conventions, when you're trying to make merchandise, when you're trying to network and do your own thing. You you need to think of it like a business. You can't think of it like, oh, this is a fun little hobby, unless that is what you want to do. And you are doing it as a fun little hobby, and you don't care if you're out thousands of dollars. But I've seen people be screwed out of thousands of dollars because they just didn't know any better, and no one was wanting to help them. And other artists who, like, revel in another artist's, like, misfortune... Which, yeah, there are some artists I don't personally agree with, and I, I don't want to ever support. But am I going to go to a random person and be like, hey, don't support that person because I don't like them? No, because I think that's petty and rude, and I think that's terrible. You don't have to support somebody. You don't have to like somebody. But if someone else does, don't be a dick, you know? And if you have young people coming up asking for advice, probably means because they admire you or something. And usually they will buy something. I've had a lot of people give me the argument of like, well, if I tell them everything, then they're not going to buy anything. I just wasted my time. And I'm like, really? Because when I've had people be nice to me, I usually bought something from them. I was polite. I've, I've talked to other artists and they're about the same way. And then there's some people who don't ask advice and they're just rude to be, a, to be rude, you know? And these are the things we need to talk about. We need, you know, to art, as artists, we always talking about fucking you know, bringing each other up and, oh, we need to show people how hard it's, but then it's like, but then you're like, you, you behind closed doors, you know, behind Twitter, you're like, I'm not going to fucking help anybody because some of them just aren't good people. And again, you know, you'll see very, very popular artists sell shit that's really expensive and you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm never going to get one. It's a luxury item. That's another thing people need to understand is they'll, they'll, they'll spend all this money investing in stuff and then be like, oh my God, why isn't this selling? And then it's like, well, it's a luxury item. You don't need that charm. You don't need that print. You don't need that sticker. You don't. You want it. And then you're going to get it, you know, but you don't need it. You know, you don't. And I, I could probably also do a whole video of people who like haggle artists and, you know, you screw them over. So it's, it's on both sides. You know, no one's going to win. No, nothing in life is easy. But, you know, if you want to help others and inspire others, when people are asking you questions, just be honest. Just be nice. You know, or hell, if you do make it at home, just say I make it at home. 
Or if people are like, oh, what do you recommend? Should I get this printer or this printer? Tell them what it is. I don't understand why artists are scared of competition. I don't understand why artists are like scared of all of this. And hopefully I made enough, hopefully I made enough sense. Uh, trying to do better with my, uh, my paper ASMR. Uh, but let me know if you this helped you guys, if other people have gone through things like that. Um, and yeah, okay. Hopefully this was good. And as always, guys, I will. See you next time. Bye.